Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome you all to our new course, Organizational Behavior. And today we are going to start Introduction to Organizational Behavior. And we are following the text, uh, Essentials of Organizational Behavior, and another text known as Only Organizational Behavior, written by same authors. Stephen P. Robbins and Timothy A. Judge. And this book is available in our library and this book is also available in the market. So we will follow. Uh, you can have only one, uh, Essentials of Organizational Behavior by Stephen P. Robbins or Organizational Behavior, Stephen P. Robbins. So we are grateful to our uh, authors uh, for this excellent one. The text is really brilliant. I'm just uh, presenting, uh, sharing the knowledge uh, from the text. And any additional information that uh, I will uh, cover and I will provide these materials to you also. So what is the field of organizational behavior? So what, what is the field? Uh, from the name, you can see that it says organizational behavior. So I'm asking you that the organization can have a hat. Yes, they have a hat of the organization, but normally organization that don't have hat, hands, legs, so who are really operating an organization or running an organization? They are human resources. So when we are talking about organizational behavior, then we are not really focusing on the behavior of the organization. Instead, we are focusing on human resources behavior human resources knowledge human re resources skills human resources abilities human resources attitude so from the name don't be confused so organizational behavior means the behavior of the human resources in relation to their knowledge their skills and their abilities that is reflected through attitude. And that's why organizational behavior studies the influence that individuals, groups, and a structure have on behavior within organizations. So what we say again, organizational behavior studies the influence influence that individuals that is human resources groups and structure that you have studied under management simple structure functional structure divisional structure matrix structure strategic business unit holdings company so you have started so many structure so have on behavior within the organization what's the main goal there are many other goals but what is the main goal of the organization behavior the main goal is to apply that knowledge toward improving an organization's effectiveness so we want to achieve the effectiveness of the organizations. If it is a service oriented organization that will deliver the best service, if it's a manufacturing organization that will manufacture the best way, and, and this way, if it's a, a marketing organization that will go for the best marketing. So, this way, the main goal is to apply the knowledge of organizational behavior toward improving an organization's effectiveness. So what are the focal points that we will cover through the syllabus, the course outline? 
uh, uh, offered by the Department of Finance, University of Chittagong. So our course outline focuses on organization jobs, the work related to the organization, the problem associated with absenteeism, the employee productivity related to employee turnover, why employees leave the organization, and how to retain good employees. We will focus on productivity, how to enhance productivity. We will focus on human performance based on our knowledge, skills, and abilities. And then obviously the management style and organization follows. What should be the right management style? It varies organization to organization. These are the focal points that we will cover uh, within our course outline. Now, we are talking about intuition. So, organizational behavior also focuses on complementing intuition within systematic study. Intuition is a quality of a human being that inspire to work. And the belief that work is itself the reward. So you are not only working for money. You are working for recognition as well. You are working because you love to work. You are working because you love your organization and as well as country. You are working because you love people. So intuition is the God feeling explanation of behavior. So if you don't interested to work, if you are just working for money, you don't look for recognition, you don't love work, you don't love the organization, you don't love the country, you don't love your people, then uh, you are not at all a human being. You don't have intuitive qualities. Organizational behavior works to create awareness among the human resources and gradually they will have intuitive quality, intuition capabilities. So intuition with systematic study, why? Because systematic study improves ability to accurately predict behavior. So intuition is a very good quality. Yeah? So it helps you to focus. It helps you to evaluate. It helps you to evaluate merits and demerits of any system actions activities. So systematic study improves ability to accurately predict behavior. How? It assumes behavior is not random. It assumes behavior is not random. So we can influence behavior. We can influence behavior through training, through workshop, through seminar, through mentoring, through supervising, through coaching, through referraling, referraling, referral, referraling even through treatment. If necessary, we can send our employees to the doctors. So systematic study improves ability to accurately predict behavior because systematic study assumes behavior is not random. Fundamental consistencies underline behavior. So 
there are fundamental consistencies. So it's not that it will swing every minute or every seconds or every hour. And this can be identified and modified to reflect individual differences. So we assume that is also that behavior can be identified. And these we can say that someone's behavior is good, someone's behavior is not good. Someone is really behaving very well. And someone is the leader of the organization. The team members really uh, uh, listen to him, listen to her because of his or her behavior. And also, uh, this can be modified to reflect individual differences. So when we talk about systematic study, because organizational behavior, organizational behavior is a systematic study. It is a systematic study. You cannot study in your own way. It is a systematic study. And this study helps you to improve the behavior of the uh, team members, behavior of the uh, of employees of the organization. So systematic study is a lot. Systematic study examines relationship, examines relationships. Systematic study attempts to attribute causes and effects. So it examines relationships and we know that in our organization, we have problem of role overload. So some people are working too hard and some are not. There, are, there is another problem, role conflict uh, related to the relationship. And there are role overload, role conflict, and there are many other problems. So systematic study examines relationships attempts to attribute causes and effects so what are the causes of a role conflict what are the causes of a role overload and what are the effects of a role overload and a role conflict and if role overload role conflict exists the effect is obviously the environment will be demotivating, productivity will be low, employee satisfaction will be zero or low, and employee turnover will be high. Employees will leave the organization uh, on regular basis. And systematic study basis conclusions on scientific evidence so you need scientific evidence organizational behavior is a systematic study and this systematic study is not a uh, dream based that you have a dream in the last night and today you are talking about that no it's on scientific evidence on data gathered under controlled conditions so in this course we will cover so many theories, models, and those are based on scientific evidence. It's not fictitious. It's not that much, too much philosophical. Data is measured and interpreted in a reasonably rigorous manner so that we can have very right findings. So when we talk about evidence-based management, evidence-based management, you cannot say someone is performing well, or you cannot say someone is not performing well. The performance is bad. You can't say like this. If you say someone is performing well, at the beginning of the year, you must set the standard and you must disclose these standards to each and every employee. Each and every employee, they know what's the standard. So when everybody knows the standard, this is uh, very much transparent. And 
after a certain period of time, after a quarter or six months later or one year later, now you can say that, yes, someone is performing well or someone is not. So it's evidence-based management. It's complement systematic study. So evidence-based bases decisions on the best available scientific evidence because you have the standard, you have declared the standard, then you evaluate performance, you evaluate performance on job, taking interview or filling questionnaire or through observation, you are applying all the scientific methods uh, to compare compare your employees performance with the standard and if you find a reasonable gap no problem but if you find an realistic gap then obviously therefore they're not performing well their performance is bad forces managers to become more scientific in their thinking so obviously ob is the systematic study of evidence-based management the cause uh, forces managers to become more scientific in their thinking so when the organization set a standard and obviously these standards are scientifically recognized and when you evaluate the performance using so many methods these methods are scientific one and then you evaluate or you you try to find out the gap in between standard and actual performance that is also a, a scientific and then you can take you can take corrective measures so you can take corrective measures you have evidence that some people some employees are doing better some are not contributing discipline to the organizational behavior field so we have micro environmental factors and macro environmental factors we will move from micro to macro or macro to micro so when we talk about micro that is the study of the individual and when we're talking about macro this is the study of the team members the groups the organizations uh, organization as a whole so what are the elements that we will focus the psychology the social psychology sociology and anthropology so contributing discipline to the organizational behavior field are psychology uh, social psychology sociology and anthropology few absolutes in organizational behavior was that that impossible to make simple and accurate generalizations uh impossible to make simple uh and accurate generalizations uh, if you say a plus v whole square, then we know it's a square plus twice a v plus b square. That is a pure science. But you see that these are not pure science. Psychology, social psychology, sociology, anthropology. These are not pure science, and uh, you 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 can't make a process or system uh, to absolute simple are absolute accurate it's not possible but it's very much nearest to accurate if your data justify 90 percent say it's nearest to accurate you can't say it's 100 percent human beings are complex and diverse so that is also we have to remember and organizational behavior concepts must reflect situational conditions environmental conditions the past tool we have to consider. Past tool. That political environment is continuously changing. 
economical environment is continuously changing. Social factors like education, belief, fashion, food habits, uh, culture continuously changing. Technology, technology. Technology is continuously changing. Then legal factors are continuously changing. And nature is important nowadays when we take any decision. Uh, environment, environment is important. Bangladesh and so many other countries are now under sustainable development goals. In 2030, we have a plan to achieve 17 sustainable development goals. So to reach to the sustainable development goals, we need to consider situational conditions. Contingency variables. Some variables are out of control. It can happen anytime. Tornado can happen anytime without... Uh, giving signals to us so ov concepts must reflect these sort of situational conditions what i have mentioned political economical social technological legal and environmental and also contingency variables that can happen anytime so this way we can say that behavior is the summation of input and conditions so you say that input and conditions. You say that, oh, you didn't study? Yes, I study. But my environment is not supporting. My condition is not supporting that what I have learned to apply. So this way, input and condition, you have to consider. And the summation of input A and condition C equals to behavior B. What are the challenges and opportunities of organizational behavior? The workplace contains a wide mix of cultures, races, ethnic groups, genders, and ages. So when they have established organizational behavior, you see that the different cultures, different races, Ethnic groups, genders, and ages uh, reach to a one culture. And that is known as corporate culture. So where each and everyone is following similar culture. Corporate, corporate culture. So corporate culture is what? Corporate culture is the culture which is maintained, followed, exercised, by each and every employees of the organizations, though they are from different cultures, so races, ethnic groups, genders, and ages. How it's possible? Possible through organizational behaviors. And that's why employees have to learn to cope with rapid change due to global competition. So organizational behavior offers so many training workshop and seminars through employees can learn how to cope with the rapid change due to globalization due to global competition another uh, problem is sometimes uh, corporate loyalty has decreased due to corporate downsizing and use of temporary workers so like mcdonald's or Pizza Hut, KFC, or Walmart. If you study their activities, then you will find that they have many, they have so many temporary workers. And here, temporary workers, uh, since they are temporary, so they are not that much loyal to corporate culture. So this problem uh, arises. So challenges are here that temporary workers so for temporary workers how many training workshops and seminars you can organize and that will not be economic uh, how much money you will spend for temporary workers 
So these sort of challenges are there. But managers can benefit from organizational behavior theory and concepts. They know how to deal, how to direct, how to inspire, how to communicate, how to coordinate, and how to control employees through organizational behavior. Uh, through a study of organizational behavioral theories and concepts. Because managers studied management and other courses, and organizational behavior theories and concepts will help them to understand their employees and help them to understand what sort of management style, management, management style will be suitable for the organization. There are so many management styles like autocratic, democratic, and laissez faire. So, the study of organizational behavior theories and concepts will help our managers to understand what should be the right management style, what should be the right organizational structure uh, for the organization. Now, the time is for globalization globalization if you say like some politicians that we can do anything without the support of the rest of the world you are wrong even the politicians are wrong nowadays if there is a recession if there is a recession in europe we are suffering here 300 to 400 governments They stop their production and millions of people are losing their job. Why? Because when there is a recession in Europe, Europeans are not buying lots of clothes nowadays. So if they don't buy clothes more than uh, their meat, so our exports, our exports, is decreasing automatically when exports decreases the factories are not producing uh, not not uh, uh, running their operations and then employees are losing their jobs so this is globalization so if you have a problem in the latin america if you are not conscious because you know that brazil they are importing of uh, pharmaceuticals products from us medicine so if there is a problem in Brazil, and we will lose our exports. When there was a problem in Iraq, 20 lakhs Bangladeshis, uh, they lost their job. So this way, you need to respond to globalization. And if you study organizational behavior, you can respond to globalization uh, uh, very rapidly and accurately. You know that there is a needs differential, so differing needs and aspirations in workforce uh, in different countries from different cultures. So you can easily understand the needs and then you can take necessary strategies. And globalization is supporting the people uh, working from different cultures and different countries. If you go to the Europe and America, you will find that uh, in one organization, employees are from 50 countries. And in your country also, there are people from 20, 30 countries are working. And after 10 years, after 15 to 20 years, you will find that in your country, uh, you will have uh, different countries, people are working together. So you need to understand their culture, their belief, their uh, 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 food habit, their fashion, and you have to respect and when you want to form a team to run your organization successfully, then obviously you need to study the behavior of the people from different cultures, different countries, different religion, uh, a different region. And organizational behavior theories and models will help you to understand this. And our course is designed the way you can understand all this. So we are talking about diverse workforce, 
we are black, we are white, we are fatty, we are skinny, we are short, we are tall, we have different background of knowledge, we have different skills, we have different abilities, uh, our beliefs different, but we want to achieve same goal. We want to reach to the same vision. Uh, we want to achieve similar objectives. And it's possible if you can realize and recognize workforce diversity and treat them properly. And if you really want to treat them properly, considering their gender, age, race, ethnicity, and male or female, you must study organizational behavior theories. So what OOP offers inside into at the end of the successful completion of a course named organizational behavior will help you to improve quality and productivity of your organization. You will be able to deliver the best customer services. You'll be able to build a customer responsive culture where you will ask your customer that, my dear customers, how can I help you? Are you happy with my support and service? If you are not happy, then let me know that how can I improve my services? So these kind of culture you can develop through organizational behavior. And if you have no knowledge about organizational behavior, then you'll be harsh. You'll be harsh, hard to your customer. You say that if you are happy, it's okay. If you are not happy, that's I'm, I'm happy. So you can't say like this. And you can develop your people's skills. Because organizational behavior theories will help you to develop the behavior, the attitude of your employees through enhancing knowledge, skills, and abilities. So your employees will be able to understand the importance of behavior. And the development of behavior is not a task of one day. It is a, a matter of continuous improvement. OV will help you or aids in dealing with stimulating innovation and change. Stimulating stimulating means inspiring motivating uh, kara. so organizational behavior is stimulate your innovative capabilities your, you can innovate it helps to increase tempo rariness in the workplace and helping employees Balance work-life conflicts nowadays. Most of the organizations are really uh, worried about this. You know, Japan, where the people are so busy, you are happy to see their progress and growth. But what is happening? The people are suiciding every day. Because the problem is they are unable to establish a balance between work and life. So organizational behavior will help to understand how to establish, how to balance work and life. How many hours you will work, how many hours you will spend for you, and how many hours you will work for you, you will you will spend for your families. And also organizational behavior help improving ethical behavior. It will allow you to think positively through the studies of behavior, through understanding of culture, through understanding of your employees. It will help you to think positive. It will help your employees to think positive. So it will establish a positive organization, positive organizational behavior through examining how organizations develop human strengths. Foster vitality, the talent you have, resiliency, and unlock potentials. 
focus is on your employees strength and not their weaknesses but obviously you have to identify their weaknesses and capitalize their strengths to kick out or to minimize the weaknesses or to minimize the challenges arises from the weaknesses three level of organizational behavior analysis that we will cover through the course so our course outline if you see you will find so many chapters available there among these chapters some are related to individual level uh, productivity enhancement some chapters are related to group level and some chapters are related to organizational system level so these way the text we are following that is also design and the course outline we will we are following uh, that is based on the text so we will cover three level or individual level organizational level and organizational system level so we can say the ov helps our managers with insight to improve people's skills valuing workforce diversity how to respect diverse workforce empowering people and creating a positive work environment dealing with lever shortages coping in a world of temporariness creating an ethically healthy work environment remember organizational behaviors goal is to understand and predict human behavior in organizations establish fundamental consistencies underlie the behavior it is more important than ever to learn organizational behavior concepts we are not going to learn only we are learning to implement both managers and employees must learn to cope with temporariness and these way we will continue our course uh, that is enough from my side uh, uh, at this moment and we will continue our classes uh, on regular basis and we will cover more in the future so if you have a question if you uh, uh, want to ask questions then now you can 